So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how your brain processes information, tackles information. Um, so in order for us to understand learning and learning theory and memory and how we retain information, it's important to understand kind of the dynamics of your brain and what's happening and then the way it approaches information. So first off, we're going to look at this. So for a long, long time, people thought that the left brain and the right brain did two very different things. You know, but your left brain was more analytical and um, about language and logic and reasoning. And then your right brain was where, you know, creativity and imagination and all that took place. What we now know is it's not really that black and white. It's not that simple that it's just broken down to left brain and right brain. Um, but they approach things, the situations differently. So, for example, I don't know how many musicians are out there, but when you're playing the piano, what's happening is your left side of your brain in that music time is really paying attention to the detail, you know, so paying attention to those specific notes. But your right side of your brain is approaching that music and looking at the entire picture so that when we're listening to music, we're kind of hearing that big picture with the right side of our brain, but picking out those specific key notes with the left side of our brain. So they, they're both capable of being creative as far as that goes, you know, are, are musically inclined, left brain and right brain are able to be creative or artistic in that way, but it's the way that it looks at that situation. So your left brain looks at it as a more kind of detail oriented. Here are the detail parts of it. And your right brain is more of that big picture. Um, and it's the same thing with language. Um, so both sides of the brain are going to be interacting with language but the right side of your brain is looking at it kind of in that holistic, you know, um, imagery, literary element kind of thing. And your left brain is looking at language and, and more of those those tiny details, you know, like sounding out words um, or, you know, definitions. So don't get so caught up that left brain is this and right brain is this, but it's just at a different approach in how they see things. Um, and then we are, you know, our brains are, um, divided into different areas. And so this document here tells you a little bit about where those different things are located. Um, one of the things that I think it's important to note is a lot of times your frontal, your frontal cortex where a lot of this executive functioning is happening is one of the last things to fully develop. Um, we see a lot of these quickly develop, you know, zero our birth to two, um, but your frontal lobe is the one that continues to develop over time. And so that's why we do need to engage in a lot of these kind of memory learning techniques so that we continue to, to develop this executive function here in the front. So that being said, what's also very interesting is how our brain then processes or tackles um, pieces of information when we see it. So for example, here's a, a painting. And when we look at this painting, um, the process that our brain undergoes is we say, okay, um, I'm looking at this information and now I'm going to chunk pieces of pieces that kind of go together. So a lot of times when people look at this, they immediately go to the audience and they chunk that. And then they go up to this guy and they chunk that. And then they come down here, usually the last one, and they kind of chunk that together. So that's, that's the first thing our brain does is it chunks what we see or what we hear into different pieces. And then it takes those pieces and it looks for patterns um, that would clue us in about what might be happening. When we find those patterns or we look at those details, then what we do is we pull up these schemas in our brain, which are basically like our file folders about where information goes. And we say, okay, well, this is what I noticed this fits into the file folder that I already have, so therefore it must be this. So first we chunk, then we find patterns, and we find where those patterns fit into our existing schemas. So for example, if I would ask you, what is this painting about? What's interesting when I ask students this is they, they think it's a couple different things. Some think it's church, but a lot of them think it's school. And so what they, why they do that is they say, okay, well, there's like a lecturer guy up there this looks like a classroom. We've got one person who's kind of falling asleep um, and chatting. Um, they've got books in front of their, you know, in, in front of them. And so 
we think it's that way because of our current existing knowledge about what school is or what school was, the lecturer, the classroom, sitting nicely with the book in front of you. Um, and so that's how your brain starts processing that information is again, finding those clues and saying, well, these clues must mean that it, it's this X, Y, or Z. Um, and then that's what continues to tack on. Uh, that's why it's really important when we are trying to learn information is we have to activate kind of what we already know and figure out how this new information gets tacked on with the prior existing information. So, and all that's kind of happening simultaneously. Um, and that's where we're, when we're talking about, you know, the right brain, left brain, and how we see that information. And, you know, in these areas of what uh, the different lobes do, um, it's, it's interesting to see how all that takes place, you know, almost in a split second. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, and then your module has a lot more information on learning theory and information processing.